Baba being the creator of golden consciousness. which leads to golden age. With his vision and his knowledge transforming hellish sanskars into heavenly merging sanskars of hell and re-emerging sanskars of heaven Such a huge task he performs, and yet he never takes ownership of it. He stays in the background silently, incognito. Even being the ocean of knowledge, he says, when it's time, I get pulled in the drama. And Murli gets spoken. He's so obedient to his own drama. Never takes ownership. And that's what he sees in the soul that I am. He sees that incognito. Selfless. Being of light. Awakens the being to his changeless nature. the angelic heart. A heart as generous as the Father. And this generosity first reflects in the attitude of the being 
to words. His own parts recorded within himself. and generosity of heart. In seeing his unlimited truth. In Baba's gaze. This requires generosity to let go. Of everything. That the self has associated himself with. That is limited. See the limited experience is constantly present in a very silent manner. Really just knowing yourself as that light, shining light that has no idea about this or that. Can see the unreality. of every experience that is emerging only to merge just keeping oneself under Baba's gaze and really lays bare all the entire story within himself without any sense of ownership 
allows Baba to see it. Surrenders it to Baba. That Baba, this is the story of 84 parts within me. I surrender it to you. Surrendering that is filled with gratitude. Not with an intention of getting rid of the story, but gratitude for that story within. And Baba tells the soul, the story is beautiful within you as it is. Story was never a problem, child. You believing yourself to be as that part or character in the story There was an appearance of suffering. But you truly are untouched. It's a perfect story for you. within you. Just know your truth beyond it, before it. That is all. No feeling in this story, no dialogue, no thought in this story that you have laid bare in front of Baba ever defines you. Surrendering means to be the witness. With Baba of that story within you. So now you're out of the story. The reader of that storybook within you.
How does it feel to be without a story? Look at Baba and see. How does it feel to be without a story? Just living lights. Baba is shining light on the beam. Look, you are the source to make this story come to life. Every experience in that storybook, every thought in that storybook, every dialogue in that storybook, You shine light on it and as though they start dancing. As though they come to life. Those characters in the storybook. As though they come to life just by your attention on it. But the moment you take your attention away from that storybook and keep your attention on Baba, You know yourself as that source. So now it's time to rest. Rest as who you are. And go beyond the storybook. We'll pick up the storybook once again. When it's the right time. And it's not like the characters won't jump out of the storybook. They will keep jumping out again and again. But now you can see them as those fictional characters from the book. And Baba is letting the soul know the only one 
is this last character in the book. Each time you see that jumping out of the book, of your mind, understand and know there's no reality in it. It's not trying to scare you. It's just part of that storybook in your mind. Just know you are the living light. And you have the power to either give it power or to withdraw power from it. To stay combined with Baba. That is your true place eternally. And know that the personality of the character in the storybook is simply for the storybook. And child. Your personality is like Baba's personality. And whilst you're so clear about it, you can be aware of the character's personality and know there's nothing wrong with it. It's just how it's supposed to be in the story. But Baba has given you this option. B. as you are. Just keep your vision on Baba. And then you can see the storybook with him. Have you ever seen those storybooks? 
in which there are problems. Hmm? Has anybody seen? You know books which they have, you open and there are pop-ups in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they look very real, no? It makes the story come to life. Yeah. This is that pop-up in the storybook within the soul. <laughs> just that this pop-up just seems more real than the paper pop-up. This is no less than any paper pop-up. Mm -hmm. So the Murli that we will be reading today is the unlimited form of surrender. Yeah, the date is 29670. 29670. When you really see yourself as a being sitting in Baba's lap, and in Baba's lap, you're reading this storybook in which there's this person, this main character in your storybook is, each one's storybook has a different main character, right? <laughs> right? You, in your storybook, has Devashri as the main character. And you have Anita as a main character in your storybook, right? But the beauty is that I, the being, am completely separate from this character. That is the highest form of surrender, actually. Then what Baba is saying, it will be easy to understand. Yeah, so the unlimited form of surrender. Do you the tiny point, I will replace this you with the living light. Yeah, so that this you is not heard by the character. Okay, so do you the living light know your four images child? Do you know your four images, the living light that you are? So you are this living light. And inside of that book, Baba is saying you're playing certain hero parts within that storybook. Your character is playing certain hero parts. So let's see which one Baba is saying. Today, Bab Dada is seeing the four images of each one of this present time, of the confluence age, yeah? Not of the future time, not of the future, but now in confluence age means, confluence age means moment of now, here and now, yeah? Because in confluence age, there is no past and future of the person. It's only I, the timeless, eternal being. So what are those four images, child, to this tiny star Baba is talking to? Yeah? Do you know your own images? Hmm? The living light that you are. No? So let's see what Baba says, okay? <laughs> so do you know your own images? So some replied, so Baba said, the things that you all said, have you become such images or you are becoming those? Which means have you become aware of that image that you are? Or are you still awakening to that 
awareness that you are. So when will you be those? Or do you think that you will go fast at the last moment? Hmm? So Baba is saying it is now. Here you will experience these images. Because the moment you know you are the being of light, you have unlimited potential. Unlimited being that you are with Baba. Yeah? So then Baba is saying, the more you make yourself an image of Siddhi over a long period of time, what does this Siddhi Swarup over a long period of time? To that extent, child, you will claim a right to a complete kingdom over a long period of time. So what is Siddhi Swarup? What is Siddhi Swarup? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Be in our truth, yes. Over a long period of time, Baba is saying. So what does that mean? What is the Siddhi? What is the success? What is your Siddhi with Baba? Getting success, yeah, but what success? Over a long period of time, what is your practice that Baba is wanting you, the soul, to see your truth? in the face of opposition from Maya over a long period of time. Yeah. So staying with Baba, being steadfast in your truth, whilst Maya is there moment by moment, Baba wants this to be there over a long period of time so that then your power is fully emerged for you to be playing that part or for you to be playing that part without being involved as that story character for 21 parts at least. Yeah, so that you are not coming under the influence of the matter and its changing nature for 21 births, 21 parts. For that, you need to emerge that power in the face of the script of the mind, now. Yeah? So then, then for 21 parts, when the mind is bringing its own script above, in front of you, you are, actually it's an alignment with your truth, so it's okay, but soul is not becoming body conscious at least for 21 parts. This is the first one. The first part out of those 21 parts. Yeah. So the power is emerging now. And more you can withstand the forces of Maya mind, the more it is becoming your and it's absorbing your truth as it is. And then that recording will go with you. Now, of course, as we said yesterday, that each one's will be different. Nothing wrong with it. Because the truth of every being is beyond the story. But that's what Baba is explaining here. The more you make yourself, yeah, absolute, very good. The more you make yourself an image of Siddhi Swarup, over a long period of time, to that extent, you will claim a right to a complete kingdom over a long period of time. For instance, if someone is not Siddhi Swarup over a long period of time, then according to that, he will claim the right to a kingdom for a short time. He does not receive it for the full time. I would say firstly, it's here. 
honestly, this one will say for the sir, doesn't feel very motivated by those things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't really internally, this one is telling you what golden age path and all of that doesn't really attract this one. But what is most attractive is I, the being, am experiencing this happiness of who I am here and now with Baba. Yeah? Yeah. This constant happiness, this nasha of being with Baba and being aware of all the forces of Maya and yet be happy. This to this one is highest intoxication. I don't know what it is for you. You feel free to share. <laughs> yeah? So over a long period of time, to what extent are you the king of your mind, intellect and sanskars now? That is how this one is seeing it. Yeah? So to what extent are you experiencing mind, intellect and sanskars are bringing up lots of things and here you are, totally silent, totally happy, totally contented. And this can bring so many things of all different types of nature, of some scars in your mind. And here you are just still. Now this Baba is saying has to be a practice over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the golden age, we won't even know what and how we earn the status. So it's all about experiencing it now. Yeah. You don't even know you're a soul there. <laughs> yeah, so what's the attraction? I don't understand, but it's each one to its own. Only those who are engaged in making effort to be perfect over a long period of time, claim the right to a kingdom for the full time. What are the four images Baba is seeing? Now let's see. This is also, now when Baba is using the word aim, how do you understand it? Can anybody tell me? How do you understand when Baba uses the word aim when he's saying it has to be now also? Then what do you mean by aim? See, the person mind will hear the word aim as something to happen in the future. Hmm? And the soul will hear it as? Now. Here and now. Yes, aim means now. So, this is the aim. Yeah, in this moment. Do you feel complete? Baba is asking. For being complete, firstly, Baba is seeing the image of knowledge. This is the image. What is the image of knowledge? Image of the self. Image of knowledge of Baba. Image of knowledge of drama. Then image of knowledge of Maya. Yeah. What is the difference between drama and Maya? Because Maya is also part of the drama. So what is the difference? Drama is a storybook within your mind that we understand now, right? So then what is Maya? Nothing but owning it as me or mine. That is all. Yeah. Yeah, identification with the story as me. That is Maya. That is all it is. So the word identification is Maya. Nothing else. Yeah. And that is why it's an illusion.
So story is not a problem. Soul is wonderful. Story is wonderful. Just identification in between. But that too is part of the play. Right? So acceptance and allowance all over. So Baba is saying, so this is the aim, to be the image of knowledge. So this is being the image of knowledge. Secondly, then once you have this knowledge, then to be the image of virtues for the soul will feel natural. Right? Soul is not just peace, love and all good things. Soul has also got a beautiful story with the opposites within itself. So this is both is known. Right? So now the image of virtues feels very natural to the being. And here's a storybook within me which has both day and night. High and low. That's okay. Right? Then thirdly, the image of being a donor. Are you donating anything to anybody? What did Brahma Baba donate? Let's see him. What did he donate? <laughs> Are you muted? Uh, I don't know if it's possible to unmute Devashri. Om Shanti. Yeah, Baba. Yeah. Yeah. Baba donated me pan. This is the highest donation. I and mine. Then everything springs forth from that. Very good. So Baba is saying that um, thirdly, the image of a donor and fourthly, the image of being complete Siddhi Swaroop which we saw earlier what it means. So you were told to do service means to be a great donor. So who can really do service? Who's free from thinking I'm doing service? <laughs> Who's observer of the thought, which can come that I'm doing service. The thought can come, but you're simply the observer of it because you've donated any I and mine to any thought in the story, right? So that's what Baba is saying. So Bab Dada is seeing the four images of each one, yeah, surrendered completely. So, uh, so Baba is saying that of each one, the image of four faces is remembered. You have to give everyone the image of four images in the one image. If even one image is missing here, there will accordingly be a weakness there. Just as you book in the luggage that you take with you when traveling and you receive it at the other end. Similarly, this too is a booking office. <laughs> to the extent that you book whatever you want now, so you will accordingly attain it there. Very beautiful, no? The analogy. Hmm? So what is in your luggage that you're owning as yours right now? Nothing, no? Empty-handed. <laughs> I own nothing. I own no vices. They're not me or mine. I own no virtues. They are not me or mine. I only own Baba's virtues. So then nothing is really mine. So then I take Baba's virtues in my luggage. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Free from I and my... Yes? My Taj. Huh? Sorry? My Taj. Luggage nahi. Crown. 
Ah, crown. So we will take the crown. Very good. So we will take the crown of Baba's virtues with us and Baba's powers with us. Yeah? So I don't really own any virtues either. I'm just an empty, silent being of light, empty of any ownership. any ownership. Yeah? Then that is complete surrender, which Baba will say later, that you don't even own virtues. He will say that in this Murli. Yeah? So Baba is saying, think whether you have become all four images. Have you become those with four images? Because accordingly, in copper age will be created according to your images of the confluence age. Yeah? Do you understand? So now, what will you keep in front of you in order to be complete image? You tell those on the path of devotion to come and understand what effort the deities made that they became as they are portrayed in the images. So what will you keep in front of you in order to be a perfect image? In the corporeal form, there is just one aim of perfection. What aim did Baba keep in order to be karmatit? In which aspects did he become perfect? Do you know how much he adopted an unlimited vision of the word perfect? Perfect is just one word, but he imbibed it to such an unlimited extent that he became as he is. So as a teacher, Baba is giving this highest possibility to each one. And who can imbibe this highest possibility? The one who is accepting their part in this moment as it is. And who can really have the power to accept their part as it is in this moment? The one who is beyond the part. Yeah? Who can truly be content? The one who is embodiment of contentment. And it would be a certain feeling right now that is coming in this moment as we are sitting in the class here. There could be certain feeling, some nice feeling or some not so nice feeling could be there. Yeah. But I'm totally detached. Both are equally good. Some, sometimes something else comes, sometimes something else comes. I'm detached. Both are equally accepted. Yeah. So that one, Baba is saying, by having the total aim of surrender, he became perfect. So surrender and perfection goes hand in hand. I own nothing. I don't own a single part of any story, good or bad, ugly or beautiful. I'm neither. I, the being, totally surrendered. Means even this experience of this moment, I don't own. However it may be, the moment you identify with it, you have owned it. Right? But, yes, yes. Bilkul. And even if the feeling of ownership is coming, Detach from that too. So it's literally a detaching from the space of zero. So anything can come and go, come and go, come and go. It doesn't matter. Baba is shining light on your true existence as you are. You cannot use your mind to know yourself. But you can surrender your mind to be yourself. This is very important.
to just know this fact. Whatever is in the mind has got nothing to do with my truth. Please repeat. Okay. You cannot use your mind to know yourself. So if I try to use the mind as it is today to know myself, it's all mixed up with the story jumbled up inside it, right? Which is part of the story right now. So you cannot use your mind to know yourself, but you can surrender your mind to be who you are. So the moment you surrender the mind, however it may be, in whatever condition it is, you surrender your mind to Baba. Then what is left is just pure you. So yeah, you can't use your mind to know yourself, but you can surrender your mind to be yourself as you are. Absolutely. See this very clearly. The whole Manmana Bhava is this definition. Hmm? Because many ask the definition of what is Manmana Bhava. This is Manmana Bhava. A surrendered mind and a surrendered intellect and surrendered sanskars. Until it's surrendered, divinity cannot arise in it. Surrendered means I own not a single thought, not a single feeling. I, own, I don't own emotion. I don't own feeling. I don't own experience. I don't own thought. I own nothing. then that is a surrendered mind. Once you don't own anything, then you know you are thoughtless, bodiless, imageless being of light. Experienceless in one way. No mind's experiences can define you. Because experience that you are embodiment of is just a constant you. The rest is all part of mind game, which is fine. Nothing wrong with it. Just surrender it to Baba. Baba, I own nothing. What you own is what I own, Baba. You know, it could be the most blissful experience of the mind. Baba, you take this also. I only own what you own. You are constantly in bliss, Baba. So that is who I am also. But the mind sometimes feels bliss. I surrender it to you. And that's okay too. Yeah. It could be an experience of suffering. That's okay too. Baba, I don't own this because you don't suffer, so I don't suffer. So we just copy him. You don't suffer, I don't suffer. The one who's suffering, I surrender that one to you because that one is a fictional mind. I surrender it to you. The one who's suffering, the experience is also surrendered to you. This kind of surrender will keep you free to be who you are with Baba. Hanji, isko hi karanhar bolenge. This is karanhar and Baba is the karan karavanhar. Yeah. So then you won't own the thinker in the sitting in the mind when you don't own the thinker sitting in the mind then you don't own the feeler that comes with the thinker then you don't own the experiencer that comes with that feeler <laughs> then you don't own that doer that comes with that experiencer so you own nothing and no one here, nobody. No body. You are no body. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> yeah. So Baba is saying that by having the aim of total surrender, Baba became perfect. This is the definition of being perfect. 
Everything that comes, it's Baba's. I own nothing. Baba, heavy feeling, it's Baba's. Child, give it to Baba. Okay, give it to Baba. Baba, light feeling, flying. Child, give it to Baba. Okay, give it to Baba. <laughs> Hmm? Baba, human experience feels very real. It's okay. Give the sense of reality to Baba. It's okay, child. You're a spiritual being having a human experience. It's fine. Give it to Baba. Yeah? You own nothing, child. You own nothing. This is a time of owning nothing. You know, so Baba is saying, so he became perfect to the extent that he surrendered. He became perfect to the extent that he surrendered. Very important. However, what is the unlimited form of surrender? The more you imbibe this in an unlimited way, to that extent, you will make your intellect unlimited. You, the soul, will make your intellect unlimited and be one with the right to the world. First, you have the right to your inner world. Then whatever is the result, we don't really pay much attention to that. So what was that unlimited surrender? There are four aspects in that too. Firstly, your every thought should be surrendered. Please underline. Your every thought, you the soul in your mind, every thought should be surrendered. It doesn't belong to you. Then Baba can use the mind, same mind, and he will give you what you need. Yeah? Then secondly, every second should be surrendered. So the moment thought is surrendered means time is also surrendered. Time and second. Second is a time. Then that time should also be surrendered. The time, seconds, everything belongs to Baba. That is your time should be surrendered. It's not to be taken in a gross form. Time to be surrendered means I, the being, am timeless. And anything that is time-bound is not defining me. This is the surrender. It's not how much time I'm doing seva. No, not that shallow understanding of time surrendered. You know? What does Baba mean by surrender of time? I'm timeless. I'm beyond time. Any thought that is time bound doesn't define me. Any feeling, any emotion that is time bound, any image that is time bound doesn't define me. Any experience that is time bound doesn't define me. Please means explain with example. We please means PP means what? I didn't understand P. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, for example, a very happy emotion comes in my experience of the being that I am. A very happy th thing happens in the drama or some happy feeling from past memory just comes up. As Rini, some happy feeling comes up. Or some kind of um, contentment based on drama comes up in my mind. That's okay. I'm not in conflict with it. I'm not fighting with it. I see it for what it is. I surrender it to Baba as it is. I'm the one, Baba, see, I'm the seer and I can see this experience of a happy feeling. I'm not objecting it. I'm not fighting with it. I just want you to see it, take it and keep it with you because I don't need it. My happiness source is just you now. 
and your company. This tiny point is speaking to Baba. I'm not saying it out of desperation to get rid of that feeling, no. Then you're suppressing it somewhere. Not you, but the feeler is suppressing it somewhere. Right? No, I see it. I'm not afraid of it. I know if I own it, then a experiencer will be born out of it. So I know it. It's just a thought, a pop-up thought in the storybook. And that character will become real. That You know, in the storybook, everything is written in the form of words. And then you start to form an image in your mind of that character in your mind. Have you ever seen that when you read a book? Even in a limited way. There's a certain body you give to that character and then a certain image is attached to that body based on what you're reading in the book. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. So Baba is saying, this is exactly what is happening. You're reading the book of your mind. You're seeing the dialogues. You're seeing the script in the book. And you're just given a certain body, which is because it is feeling real, made of matter. And there's a certain image attached to that body. It's like a pop-up out of that book in your mind. That is all it is. Yeah? Yeah, the books are written to appear real, absolutely. So this, this unlimited book is written to appear real, no? <laughs> so it's okay, whatever emotions, whatever feelings, whatever thoughts are coming based on this character, it's fine. You know it's a storybook character, a pop-up image. Yeah, see your mind and see the body kind of emerging out of it as a pop-up image. <laughs> that is all it is. So any emotion, any feeling, any thought, any image coming up. Oh, who am I that is observing it? You immediately come back to you rather than staying, engaging with what you're seeing in the storybook. Come back to you and come back to Baba. This is surrender. So Baba is saying that every second should be surrendered. Means know that you are timeless. That is your time should be surrender. Thirdly, your actions should be surrender. That means surrender the doer. There is a doer also that is sitting in that pop-up book in your mind. And that doer is nothing other than an image attached to a particular body that you're wearing right now. That is all the doer is. So thirdly, your actions should be surrendered. So I surrender the doer to Baba. Yeah? Yeah, but to understand what it means to be a karta, right? Surrender the doer means what? We need to understand that. Yeah? How? How do we surrender the doer? So when I know that there is a character in the storybook that I'm reading, there's a certain plot that has been given to that character. And character seems to have a certain control in the story, right? But that too is part of the story in that storybook. True? Let's say the storybook that I am reading, the main character is Rini in that storybook. Okay? And in that storybook, the main character seems to have control over everything. <laughs> it believes, that character in the story believes that, oh, I have control over this and I have control over that. But the one that I am that is reading it, I know that is just part of the story. That idea of having control over whatever situations the character in the storybook is facing. It's just part of that whole story. There's nothing wrong with those feelings of wanting to control. In some way, it does have a control. But in another way, it is all fictional. Does that make sense? Taruna? Taruna? 
Yeah. So I'm observer. I'm that being that is a witness of that character wanting to control this and wanting to control that and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. I have done this and I have done that. All of that is going on in the storybook. True. But I am seeing, I'm the observer with Baba, no identity with that character, that doer in the storybook. Who wants to control. More you disidentify, more you will see your true nature of knowing I do nothing will be more evident to you than being that character who's trying to control. It will still be there probably in the storybook, but that won't feel like you anymore. That is all. So surrendering action means being that non-doership. This is being non-doership. So we have to understand what being a doer also means, yeah? So your actions should be surrender. And fourthly, your relationships and wealth should also be surrendered, which means all the other characters in the storybook and all the wealth that the character may own in the storybook doesn't belong to you. Because it's all fictional. You are real. And the storybook character, what it owns, the relationships it has in the mind, whatever it believes itself to be, all is fictional in the mind. And you are beyond that mind. You are that living light. And this, these two images in the faces you see are part of the storybook in this picture. These are the two pictures of the angel and the demon, which are part of the storybook, which you, the being, is reading with Baba. Yeah? So there is this doer that thinks I am doing. Then there is another sanskara, which says, but you did not do anything. You are a witness. So this sanskara is speaking to this sanskara, and you, the being, is observer of both. You, the being, is observer of both. Then you know you're completely out of the storybook. Okay? Is that clear? So have you surrendered to this extent? Now, does the storybook character has other characters who are relationships? Does it have that? They're really just as imaginary as the characters in your storybook in your mind. I, the being, when I see myself as Rini and I believe myself to be Rini, then the relationships of Rini feel like real relationships. But when I, the being, see I'm observer of this character, which is just made up of thoughts, It's just a thought. And this thought seemed to, this image that it has taken up, seemed to be having a relationship with another, some kind of image that it has created based on another thought. So it's just a thought having a relationship with the thought. That is all it is in your mind. Ah, the picture on the side, on the right-hand side. No, it just happened to be part of the image when I took a shot. <laughs> it, you can call it mine. It just happened to be part of that image. But really the image that we are talking about is this is the mind, where there is both the different types of sanskars within the soul, but soul is beyond both the different types of sanskars. And the storybook is written in the code language of sanskars and thoughts and feelings. That's the code language of the storybook in which it is written. And I, the being, am totally the reader of the book, is completely out of it. I am thoughtless, whereas there are many thoughts within the story that I'm reading with Baba. Yeah? 
I'm reading the story with Baba. And but because I'm with Baba, I know that all these things that are coming up, popping up and whatever. And this story book is not just a flat book ordinarily in a limited way when we read. It's a very, very uh, three dimensional book that you are reading. Yeah. With Baba. And it's at its climax right now. And in the climax, there are all sorts of images are popping up. Every moment, popping up. All sorts of images. Feeling very real. Dancing their dance in front of you, the being. But you are totally separate from it. You are with Baba. This is the only reality and truth. Rest is all fictional. This that is seeming to be real is fictional. The voice that you hear is part of the fiction because this storybook also has audio with it. So these characters in the storybook also have an audio with it and a visual with it. So you can imagine the storybook, <laughs> the three-dimensional storybook. But you are the one who is beyond sound, beyond the vision of, of image, beyond the story of the thoughts. You are a silent reader with Baba, aware of the entire climax, but you are totally at a distance from it. Can you read the book if you read it this close? No, no. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> More than three dimensions, yes. <laughs> More than that. <laughs> and can you read nine dimensions, I guess? Maybe that's what it is today. Can you read it if you're this close? No. So you have to keep a distance. And then when you keep a distance, then it's then it's possible to see the story as a story in your mind. And the story is not a simple story. As we said, audio, visual, along with that, there is emotions, feelings, memories, everything. <laughs> All recording also keeps playing with it. <laughs> that is what it is. So Baba became perfect. That's why Baba is saying that your relationships, wealth, there also has to be surrendered of all relationships. Logic relationships are, of course, included in that anyways. However, the relationship between the body and the soul should also be surrendered. Means the body is Although soul is using it, anything that is being done through this body is not your doing. Earlier it was script moving your part. Now it is another script, which is, again, if it's to be connected with Baba and then perform an action, that is also your not, not your doing. Not your doing. Yeah? In that script, from that script, you can see the doer also separate from you. Yeah. Then we are not in conflict with the doer. We are just the observer of the doer. Okay. We are not trying to finish the doer. We are just simply aware of the doer. All right. Because that's part of the story. It will merge when it has to merge, when Baba wants it to merge. Leave it to him. So Baba is saying that have you surrendered to this extent? Perishable wealth is not a big thing. But imperishable wealth, the attainment of happiness, peace, purity, love and bliss as a birthright was surrendered in the service of other souls. That means he never owned it as his. He used Baba's stuff and then he used it. He felt that peace for himself lay in the peace of the children, like the father, no? Now, it's not like a person hearing, oh, if my children are peaceful, then I'm peaceful. No. Peace in peace for himself lay in the peace for the, of the children means what? 
seeing, knowing myself as a peaceful being and seeing the other souls as peaceful being as Baba sees them. Then from that, the action that comes, Baba is doing it. This is the surrender Brahma Baba had. Yeah? So, it, is it possibility for each one? Yes. Will each one take it? Based on their drum. Yeah? Nothing wrong again with that. Knowing that the truth of every being is beyond the story. So, in giving peace to other souls, he considered it to be peace for him. Because what you are seeing yourself as you see others also and what you are seeing others as is because you are seeing yourself as that. And when can soul truly experience his silence? Totally surrender. Then automatically I will see you also beyond your part. Right? See, this has to be understood from that space. Otherwise, we will come into physical service. Our mind will come into physical service. Oh, then I have to give peace to everybody. I have to do this to do more courses to bring peace. Okay, that we will do, no problem. But that's not the way you bring peace. Okay, that will happen as a part of whatever action needs to unfold through you. That's not something you are doing to bring peace, no. That's just an action that's unfolding from the place of who you are with Baba. An action is just unfolding according to the drama. Yeah? So do you understand that this is what it means to surrender your worldly wealth together with godly wealth? while staying in the stage of a detached observer. So godly wealth is also not yours. That is Baba's. And he has given you this power to use it as a trustee. His peace, his love, power to love, his power to discern, his power to decide. You're using all his powers. It's not yours. From that space, you can see the storybook character in a detached way as an observer. We will finish it here, but does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. So, total surrender is the only way the soul will experience perfection because ego is always, as per the story, wanting, not even wanting, poor ego, we can't blame the ego, but the nature of ego is just lifeless and I, the being, am giving life to it unknowingly, unconsciously. So, we don't even blame the ego. Is there anything to blame the ego? No, no. Blameless. Soul is blameless. Poor ego. Why are we blaming the ego? What is it doing? It's doing nothing. It's just present as a story in the character in the storybook. It's just being what it has been given the task to be. So I'm not blaming myself. I'm not blaming the storybook character. I'm not blaming anything. I'm aware of who I am. I'm aware of whatever the storybook character's nature and personality may be. It's perfectly fine. Who I am never changes. That is all that matters. So just keeping attention on Baba and self and with him, See what your mind is up to, what your storybook is, what page is on, what page is open. That's okay. No problem. Okay. Just don't, just see that you are aware of even the one who is immersed in the audio visual of the book. 
is not you. You're free to be with Baba as you are. So surrender the mind, then you can be who you are. But trying to know yourself by using your mind, that is part of your story then. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba.